Salutations everyone, welcome to another Overwatch 2 video where today we're going to be talking about Mauga, the new tank coming out, now with some buffs, and what you might want to do in the tank matchup, because when he was obviously available for early testing, most people were just doing the Mauga mirror, but I also wanted to learn how other tanks played up against him, because this tank is, he's going to be out there, people are going to pick him, and I need to learn that matchup as a tank player myself. I know what I want to do from the support side of things against Malga and the DPS side of things. If you missed my previous video, uh, check that out. But I wanted to dedicate an entire video solely to the tank v tank matchup. Because, like it or not, that is the most important matchup in a game. Especially if we're talking about, you know, solo queue, random comp games. That's where those matchups are going to matter the most. Uh, you know, low GM and below your tank matchups are going to be pretty straight up for the most part in that one tank's going to fight the other tank and how the teams interact with one another is going to have to play off of that uh, both the weaknesses and the strengths and sort of find out what sort of middle ground that they can make in those matchups and how the, the weaknesses can be shored up and how the advantages can be taken advantage of and when it comes to Mauga, there were three tanks that immediately spoke to me to be answers. Well, one was Zarya, another was Sigma, and another was D.Va. Especially after her buff, I've been playing a bit more of her, as she might be more viable in matchups than she was before. And she definitely is, and I'll have a completely different video talking solely about how good D.Va is or is not right now. But, we start off with Zarya. It makes sense because... She is going to build quick charge off of those double barrels that Malga is going to have. Granted, Malga will have the easiest time at cracking those bubbles than any other tank in the game, just because he just surely does the most damage. But in, until you get to up close and personal, where you're basically touching guns, uh, Zarya is going to get that charge off of her first bubble, and it's going to be firing... And he doesn't have any armor right now. 150 sounds like a lot. I did mention that in my last video. If they give Malga as much as 150 armor, he's going to be unkillable. And I think that is going to be the case when people decide to support him. Like when Roadhog was meta. Remember that? Remember that a few months ago when Roadhog was the best tank in the game? It was not fun. And then he became the worst tank in the game. And the game became much more fun Uh against Roadhog and obviously with the rework and the rework of the rework the buffs of the rework he is again super duper difficult to kill and I think Malga will be very similar in that regard but also similar in that he has the potential to throw pretty hard especially if they aren't making the adjustments against the enemy tank that are taking advantage of how Malga plays. So if I can get to the max distance or close to the max distance of my laser being, you know, above 70 charge, which typically I'm going to be as he is going to be shooting at me and isn't going to have a lot of targets, especially with the with the pretty widespread that he has when firing both of those cannons. It's going to be very tempting for him to pop your bubble. But once you have the second bubble, if you can get some support, you might be able to outlast him and out damage him when you have the beam at full charge at the very least you're occupying a lot of his time and that is the absolute key to defeating malga and i don't think zarya is the best tank at doing this but that is how you are are going to defeat malga if you're having any sort of trouble against him is you have to waste his time because he has those two chain guns but they do feed off of the same pool of uh ammo and as you can see, he pops his ult right here, and I'm just not going to live that. Almost nothing is going to live that or have any sort of success. You'll see a uh, a small uh, instance where that is not the case in the uh, gameplay that comes after this one with a different tank. But there's nothing that Zari is going to do. Both her bubbles are going to be absolutely destroyed, and she is going to instantly die as pretty much anything else will. But the two tanks that are better at wasting Malga's time would be D.Va, because her defense matrix isn't like a shield, so it, like, it doesn't have health, it's purely off of time and resource, and if you can get him to reload, that is what you can pounce, either on him or someone in his backline. You can get up to 
uh, a DPS that isn't being contested very well or support that had just blew all the cooldowns, try to keep Mauga up since he has no way of mitigating damage himself outside of one of his cooldowns. That also does, of course, heal him as well. But if they, if they misplay that... Uh, if they miss the window where they're going to get the biggest benefit out of using that one cooldown of his, then you can absolutely exploit it very well with D.Va. But then we have the king of wasting somebody's time in this sort of matchup, and that's going to be Sigma, because he has two different damage mitigators that are going to be difficult for Malga to go up against. Orisa obviously has her fortify, but Malga is unique in that he can bypass he can bypass. Her fortify in that if she is burning he's going to crit her even if she's fortified where nothing else in the game can crit her she will still get critted whereas sigma obviously has the shield to get in into the best sigma range you know which in isn't very isn't very far but isn't very close either obviously you don't want to be doing self damage against yourself with those hyperspheres but then you have the suck right you have your graphitic grasp uh, which is like Defense Matrix, not going to have any sort of health. It's going to be a timer, and that is going to give you over health when he is unloading into it. So that is going to eat up a lot of Malga's time while you're, of course, doing damage, maybe interrupting his reload with the rock. He's a big boy. He's going to be easy to hit. And sometimes, I guess, whiff in his ultimate. I don't know how you whiff that. You just kind of have to know if you're going to hit it or not. But I need to jump in and protect my mercy, which does not work out. But at least we are able to finish off the kill on Malga as they are just running in their uh, delay characters. And we're doing our best. But they were smart. They smart picked the May. I go for the the ult, but they have the cleanse and the may wall to mitigate that and then here comes malga with all the damage in the world to finish things off but of course this game is not over we just have a a little bit to go with almost three minutes to do so and we do do so here at the end but i, I do i wanted to see what zarya could do because zarya is very good right now and she has the tools and capabilities to fight him i think with the buffs this will be even less so but Sigma, uh, Sigma, a lot of people expected to be the best tank against him. What you know, with for the reasons that I I stated beforehand, he has two ways of dealing with his damage, and the rock can interrupt that reload and possibly uh, you know burn some time off of his cooldowns uh, that can mitigate damage as well as heal him. Right, you just keep him on the ground for that amount of time, uh, get your rocks up, and your flux can throw him enough in the air to where his range is not going to be nearly enough to burst you down before you can get that ultimate off uh malga does obviously have weaknesses but he's not the first tank and he won't be the last tank to have weaknesses because every single tank has huge weaknesses every single one of them has a big weakness it's just all about can you exploit it and do you exploit it and a lot of that's uh most of the time for some of the more frustrating tanks uh, that people can go up against and obviously this changes from patch to patch uh it, it's up to them on how they go about things so malga is not bad at poking he is not bad at poking but his teammates are going to be quite vulnerable and D diva's defense matrix is great up against this sort of style of malga while he has, I think, as long as he has, like, you know, a corner to go up against, he's not going to die. Especially with the 150 armor that they're going to be giving him, it's going to be really, really difficult to kill him. But, obviously, you'll be able to close in the gap with Defense Matrix, and you're going to eat up a lot of those cannons. You can pick and choose your moments. You have enough armor to eat up a bit of that before you start using the Matrix. Your healers can get your armor back up. And then you release the Matrix, hopefully without losing all of it. And then at some point in this interaction, you're going to find an opening. Like I tried to do up against the Mercy. She was able to fly away. Malga gets hit with the Anti. And then things start getting chaotic. We're starting to spread out. Focus down the Sojourn. We lose one as well. They go for the res. I don't deny it, but I'm able to get the kill. Pop the bomb. Die to the, uh, the parting gift there from the Junkrat. But... We did enough damage that my squishies are able to uh, get a firm hold of the point and continue uh, this this fight. While it is still being contested uh, with Diva's uh, boosters, it's not going to be too long before she can get into the fight and deal with Malga, who can be a bit of a menace if he is not getting contested, of course. 
Mercy tries to go in for the super cheeky res, all power to her. So many fights have been won by a Mercy swooping in all by herself, getting a res because it's so fast and it's difficult for mo the vast majority of characters to kill her quickly enough. And I was able to kill her, still not enough to stop the res. So Mercy is very good. And a lot of people thought that, that or have said, I think incorrectly that Malga is bad with a Mercy. I disagree, and this will be even more certain once he does get the the buff to that armor, uh, because that's just going to be a lot more time that he doesn't need to be healed. Well, once you've lost the armor, that's when you're going to need to be healed. And they come out with the Kitsune Rush, which is great with Malga since he can just blast away uh, without a, you know without much of a, a hope against surviving because that's just going to be too much damage so gonna have to get out of that the Defi entire defense matrix was eaten up but that's fine because anytime that any an enemy can use their ultimates to stop us at the beginning of a section i i think is you know that's a that's a fight one diva or uh, the mercy goes for the res there still not enough to stop it but enough to kill her as we go in we find the opening genji's doing some damage and Malga's lack of mobility, not that he doesn't have any mobility, but he can't contest high ground, of course. He's not going to be able to get around corners very quickly, especially multiple corners. And you can kind of just go after something that's, that's stuck around that corner. Maybe Malga's already used one of his cooldowns, but you can kind of just ignore him sometimes. You can't do that really so much with Winston or Wrecking Ball. He gets he, he just blasts those characters away. They just can't survive because that's just a ton of damage, and there's really nothing that those tanks can do up against him, and they can't get kills uh, very quickly on their own to justify going in and then losing the tank battle once that does indeed happen. I don't know how this Junkrat cut, cut out back here, but we we'll clean that up, and that is just fine, but my team does lose the foothold, so I have to retreat here with my supports. But the key thing is here, I have the Diva Bomb, which is not one of the better tank ultimates in the game, but it's it's pretty decent against Malga. If he's burnt his one uh, mobility cooldown, he's going to eat it. And another thing, while Malga using his ultimate, you're trapped in there with him, He's also trapped in there with you. Even if he tries to cancel, he's probably not getting away from a diva bomb. So that while you are going to trade your lives in that, that is at the very least something you can do to negate any further damage that Malga can do. And obviously, you know, Ana is going to be an issue for Malga players, right? But Ana, if she she a she has to hit her cooldowns, which she's not always going to. They have to be off cooldown, and she has to hit them, and they have to be followed up on. Ana by herself is not getting that kill. Even Ana with one other person. If Malga's at full health, that's probably not enough. He can also get that cleanse with, with Kiriko. Remember, Roadhog was the meta tank for a bit. And that was with Ana in the game. Uh, that was when Kiriko first came out. And she's, uh, you know, obviously not as strong right now. Uh, not nearly as strong, I would say. And her, she has, I think, the lowest win rate out of all supports in the game. And it's not close, I believe. Or at the very least, she's bottom two and I believe, every single uh, skill uh, tier. But Lamp is great with Baptiste. A lot of people might think that, oh, he ne we need the cleanse to stop against Anti. But as you can see right here, yeah, we're both trapped in here, buddy. And I killed you before you killed me. And now I don't care about being in this cage. Well, I do right now because <laughs> they still drop the ult on me and I'm totally alone. But I still get another kill before I die and at the very least that's going to eat a bit of time to where we'll be able to get a few more meters here before the Malga is able to get back into the fight and I'll be able to get quickly back to the fight almost as quickly as that Malga although he does cover more ground than more people would think so I like the D.Va matchup all right just because of the defense matrix's ability to eat up a lot of his clock to waste a lot of his time and the fact that you know, like Orisa, which people, you know, have had struggles with uh, depending on season to season, but she can't peel for her teammates. And while and Malga is better at peeling for his teammates, he's typically not going to. That's just a choice that they're going to make. They're going to want to shoot their guns, right? And they're not going to be able to protect. It's not like he can dive in and then pop his uh, both of his cooldowns to 
uh, increase the fortification damage and the healing. Uh, they got lamp, they got wall, but I got payload, and that's all that I need to make this work. We get the Kitsune rush, and that is going to be all that she wrote, because Diva's pretty good with the rush as well as we clean things up here at the end. So yeah, Sigma and Diva, I think, are probably going to be the best ones against him. Reinhardt can be serviceable. Zarya can be pretty decent. But with these buffs coming out, I think Mauga is going to be a lot stronger than people anticipated to where... We might be in a similar situation to when Hog was meta, if he's not by the time Malga comes out with all the buffs that he is getting. But there is a game plan against Malga. Even though there's plenty he can do against you, it's all about we know what his exploits are. We know where his weaknesses are. It's are you going to fight it? Are you going to switch to Ana? Because most people aren't going to switch. Are you going to switch off of the Wrecking Ball, the Doom Fist, the Winston, in order to combat against all this Malga damage coming your way? And if you can then things can get pretty simple. You still have to execute it, though.